In other news today, the body of a Japanese pilot was recovered in the mountains above Salt Lake City, Utah. The pilot, identified as 32-year-old Masashi Goto of Los Angeles, California, was attempting a round-the-world flight in an aircraft of his own design and build. He was last seen in Salt Lake City on July 4th, where he landed to refuel. It is believed he encountered a thunderstorm in the mountains of Utah, which caused him to crash. Masashi Goto was born in Oita, Kyushu, Japan, on March 12, 1896. Little about his youth is found in English-language historical records, but what is known suggests that he was an adventurous lad. He worked aboard cargo ships and saw the world during the years of the First World War. It's believed he lived a brief while in England before moving to America in about 1926 where he learned to fly. It's not known exactly where Masashi learned to fly, but his friendship with Takeo Watanabe, who worked as a manager at the Crawford Airplane and Supply Company in Venice, California, suggests that he may have learned to fly at the Crawford Company's flight school. It was together with Watanabe that Masashi decided to build and fly a plane around the world. Their plan was to fly eastward from California across North America, ferry the airplane across the Atlantic to England, and from there fly across Europe, Asia, and finally landing in Japan. Initially, both men planned to build a two-seater aircraft and make the trip together, but due to the lack of funds, they decided that Masashi, the elder of the two, would make the flight. Masashi and Takeo constructed a small biplane over the course of two years in Venice, California. Watanabe's connections within the aircraft construction business certainly helped their project. In order to better fund the construction, Masashi worked as a gardener. Some evidence suggests that Japanese businesses who heard of the project donated to the venture. The project undoubtedly had its ups and downs, but after years of hard work, their airplane, which they named the Ryofu Go, or the Thunderbird, was ready to go. The Ryofu Go was powered by a five-cylinder Pratt & Whitney air-cooled radial engine and was 14 feet long with a 22-foot wingspan. Masashi's around-the-world adventure began officially on July 3, 1929, when he departed Los Angeles and flew north following the coast to land first in Oakland and next flew northeast for a stop in Reno, Nevada. The morning of July 4th was already a festive one in Salt Lake City, but especially so for the Japanese who called Utah home. A crowd made up of mostly Japanese well-wishers gathered at the airport to see Masashi and wish him well on his journey. Masashi didn't let them down. Dressed in a leather flying cap with goggles, a smart mustache, and a white jumpsuit from the Boeing School of Aeronautics in Oakland, he looked every inch the dashing pilot of the 1920s aviation. After handshakes and a few pictures, Masashi departed Salt Lake in the early afternoon. Masashi took off and flew eastward up Parley's Canyon toward Park City. It was here that he must have seen the thunderstorm looming over the Uinta Mountains, and he must have known that he had a problem. What exactly he did next will forever be a matter of speculation. But what is clear is that he tried to navigate the storm. Some have said that he tried to fly above the storm, but could not, because he had reached the altitude ceiling for his aircraft. This attempt to fly above the storm may have caused the aircraft to lose lift, which led to an unrecoverable stall. Another pilot, who flew for Boeing, and was one of the first to arrive at the scene, said later that he thought Masashi tried to fly under the storm, but realizing he couldn't, tried to crash land. Whatever happened, Masashi Goto crashed into the side of a mountain. The impact threw Masashi into the instrument panel, and he died instantly. Days passed until the crash site was found by a local sheep herder late in the afternoon of July 8th. The sheep herder alerted a camp with a telephone a few miles away, who alerted the local sheriff. An attempt was made to reach the crash site that night, but was cancelled due to darkness. Early on the morning of July 9th, the sheriff and a few men, among whom was the Boeing pilot, as well as an undertaker, reached the crash site. On the body of Masashi, they found a small American flag, his pilot's license, identification, cash, and money order, as well as a letter from Watanabe to his father in Japan. Masashi's body was removed and taken to Heber City. 
Back in Salt Lake City, Henry Kasai, a leader in the Japanese community, and who had so enthusiastically greeted Masashi upon his arrival just a few days prior, contacted Watanabe in Los Angeles to tell him the tragic news. Watanabe caught a train to Salt Lake City to visit the crash site and collect the remains of his friend, as well as the remains of the aircraft. Masashi's body was cremated upon arriving in Los Angeles. Part of his ashes were buried in Evergreen Cemetery, and part of his ashes were sent to the Hongwanji Mission. Masashi Goto and Takeo Watanabe's great world record attempt had come to an end a little more than 24 hours after it had begun. A few short months after the tragic death of Masashi Goto, the Japanese Association of Utah erected a large stone memorial not far from the crash site. The memorial included part of the frame of Masashi's aircraft. Sometime during World War II, the monument was vandalized and part of the aircraft was stolen, possibly to be recycled as part of the United States' efforts in the war. In 1953, the stone was recovered and restored to its original location and remained there until the 1990s, when it was moved to its current spot along Highway 35 and rededicated. Masashi's memory should not be forgotten. He was among the pioneering aviators when aviation technology was in its infancy. He shared the same spirit of innovation and adventure that helped create our modern world.